So now we've fitted Francesca in the first toile or sample of her indigo robe, which was created using Pattern Lab and her unique measurements. We put them into our system, created some basic blocks, and then we obviously created this initial first toile from those basic blocks, and it fit her pretty well. However, there were a few little adjustments that we wanted to make, and they were mainly really design aspects or design um, adjustments. And I've written like a little list of them. So obviously when we had our fitting, we obviously mentioned some of these adjustments. So I'm going to reduce the waist ease on the skirt to become zero centimeters because it was a little bit baggy around the waist uh, when it came to, I want a more contoured fit around the waist and hips. Also, uh, we want to cross over the neckline at the center front by four centimeters. That just basically pulls in uh, the neckline. So we have a <clears throat> it's a little bit less revealing, let's say. Also, we're going to shorten the sleeve by 17 centimeters just to bring it up to the three-quarter length of the sleeve. And we're also going to increase the cuff width uh, to 24 centimeters, which is the width of Francesca's forearm um, at about three-quarters down the sleeve. Okay, so we're just bringing that sleeve up and uh, adjusting the cuff width. Also, we're going to be adding a huge amount of volume or a large amount of volume to this skirt block <clears throat> but we want to keep this side split concept that we have here, okay? But I'm going to pretty much get rid of all this. Oh, and there's one more thing we wanted to do. Let's just mention that as well. Um, we wanted to reduce, um, let's say, the upper skirt yoke dramatically to create a better portion look, for example. Um, well, that means essentially we're just going to be making this slightly smaller because it's very, very deep. It's making her look a little bit frumpy in that dress. You want to just make it slightly smaller just to nip the waist a bit. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to work on the easiest aspect of this block, which is going to be the sleeve because essentially we have to redraft this block. So let's just move this over here. So let's get our sleeve block pattern, okay? And let's just actually uh, change some of these lines, make them a little easier to see. One point. Let's go here. Take off the dash line. Let's go two points actually. Okay, that's a bit better. Right, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove all of the seam allowance lines because we don't actually need them at this point because we're going to be editing the pattern. Uh, we don't actually need seam allowance, okay? That's a bit better. Okay, so let's start with the sleeve. So first of all, we're going to be removing 16, sorry, 17 centimeters from the length of this sleeve. Now, essentially, this is the thinnest part of the sleeve, and so I'm going to remove it from this space here. So let's just get rid of those blocks. I'm going to draw a line straight across from where that guideline is. You see this line here? I'm going to draw a guideline straight away across and also here as well, just to separate that block, that sleeve block up. There we go. Let's just move that out a little bit. In fact, let's get rid of our entire outline for now. There we go. Okay, so what's the distance here? This is 8.4 centimeters, 8.5 centimeters. So, actually, you know what? We don't even have to do that. All I'm going to do is I'm going to get this lower panel here, and I'm just going to hit my Enter key, and I'm going to go minus 17, and hit OK. You see, and that will have moved the block up by 17 centimeters, and we can actually test that. So let's go 0, let's go 17, copy it. Oops, wrong way. Minus 17, let's hit copy. So the distance from here to here is going to be 17 centimeters. So we've reduced that sleeve by about 17 centimeters. Let me just make this slightly bolder so you can see what we're actually doing here. To change the opacity, 100. There we go. Okay, so this is essentially what the outline of our new sleeve is going to look like. And we haven't got a huge amount of this uh, small space here, but that's fine. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to lock everything down. I'm just going to draw my outline now. Just drawing in the sleeve head curve as best as possible. Trying to fall through that middle point there. Just move it down slightly. <coughs> there we go, it's a little bit cleaner. And let's also do the section as well. Oops, sorry, let's just pull that back in. And let's just move that point to there, because we want a slight little nick. And that point to there. In fact, you know what, I'm going to remove that completely. I don't think it's necessary. We're going to have a straight line from point to point. Okay, because there's just there's nothing we can actually remove from that. 
Okay, let's make that slightly thicker, so that's an outline of our pattern. And we're going to do absolutely nothing to the bottom of this, sorry, to this other panel at the bottom here, okay? We're going to keep it exactly as it is, because it still matches up with this flare. We haven't changed this flare whatsoever, we've just simply shortened that sleeve. So this is going to be quite a uh, boxy three-quarter length sleeve with loads of, like, volume, which is great. However, there's one thing we need to do, which is essentially change the width of this to be 24, because at the moment this is our cuff, and it is 16.95, which is 17 centimeters, which will essentially fit our wrist. However, if we want this to fit the upper arm or the forearm, we need it to be 24 centimeters uh, long. And then obviously we have our little 2.5 cm tab, which is where our button goes and actually overlaps on the opposite side. So I'm just going to simply go to my square tool and click 24, and then we can have, well, let's do five. Click OK. So this is the length of our new one. And then let's just go another square on the end here. Let's go 2.5. This is our little tab that's going to overlap. So essentially this will go all the way around the sleeve and overlap on the opposite side of the cuff. Have a little button. Uh, let's just join these. Let's join, or let's create the fold line. This is where we're going to be folding it in half. Okay, where's that point? There it is. That's our 2.5 mark. Fantastic, so that's our new <coughs> cuff. Great, I can now get rid of the existing one. And just to be absolutely sure, <coughs> I am still gathering this in. That's fine, I'm not going to change this too much. Um, so the length of this is 31.4 <coughs> centimeters, and I know that this is from here to here is 24 centimeters. So this will still gather nicely into this sleeve, okay? I don't want to have too much volume going on here, so that's perfectly fine. Let's just join these. So now we've created our sleeve. We've actually um, increased, sorry, reduced the size of the sleeve length, and we've also increased the size of our sleeve cuff to fit Francesca's uh, new design concept. We're next going to move on to uh, the center front of the bodice and addressing this crossover. So at the moment, it's a little bit too revealing. It's hitting that center front line. We need to bring this over by four centimeters. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab my pattern here. I'm going to let's transform it, reflect it. Let's get a copy. Let's move it across. There we go. You can see I've got my existing style lines in here, which are really important. And what we're going to do is let's just move, remove that bottom line completely. Let's do the same on this side. In fact, let's go back. Let's just adapt this block first of all here. Okay, so first of all, we can get rid of that. Let's get rid of this bottom panel, the bottom curve. Get rid of this. Okay, and we can also get rid of this neck curve. Great. So let's start off with this block here. Just going to group it. Let's then transform, reflect it, copy. Okay, great. This is my center front line. So now we need to go 4cm. Let's just get rid of all this content as well. There we go. A little bit cleaner. can move this bus line across as well. There we go. Okay, so let's just make a point like that. And then just go 4cm to the right. Oh, sorry. Yeah, to the right. Let's remove the existing point. And now let's mark this point here to this new point just there on our center front line. So this is now 4cm past the center front. So if we mirror image this, essentially we'll have an overlap which will meet just about here, which is lovely. So just pretty much at the bus point. But we can also, let's say, curve this ever so slightly just to give us a nice shaping to that collar. Oh, sorry, to that neckline. Let's just move that down. There we go, looking great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the existing part of this block. We don't actually need it anymore. Oops, cancel. Let's get rid of the block. There we go, we're getting there. So essentially what we need was that one little crossover, which we now have. And we can join these together. Join. And then let's draw that curve in at the bottom. So we go from here to here. There we go. Let's do this one as well. Make sure it's 90 degree angle to that side seam. And we, what we can do is let's just add a little point in here just to bring that down ever so slightly. There we go. Let's move that out a little bit further. Let's move that curve. And there we have our new, uh, let's say, pattern, crossover pattern for the, 
the front. However, we are missing a uh, facing now, so we're going to have to create a new facing for this because obviously it's a new neckline. So I'm going to take this, just drag it over. Let's just rotate it. There we go. Let's then take this line here. Let's take this line here and here. And then let's just grab these, move it out. We can join them. And then object, path, offset path. Let's go 4.5 cm. We can preview that. There we go. So we're drawing a face and it's about 4.5 cm. Click OK. Let's just move this back so we can see where it actually affects the block, where it overlays. That's great. So now I'm going to cut here and here and also here. Remove this, remove this. There we have our facing. Let's just move that out. We can then join and we can join here. And then let's just merge or consolidate that block. And there we have our new facing. Really simple, looking lovely. And later when we come to finish off this block, we'll add notches so they all match up. But that's looking fab. We can now remove that point. So that's now our facing panel. Uh, we're leaving the back pretty much as is, but hang on a minute, let me just uh, move this off. We don't want to keep that there. Let's just move it back to its original point. Let's rotate it until that center back is actually, uh, there we go, is on the vertical line. Let's just move this up. Great. Okay. I'm not sure why this is here. This is from ages ago. Let's just get rid of that completely. And you should always save your work as you go. Let's just zoom in. Let's just click save. Okay, so we now have our, our back and we have our front, our new front. We're going to leave the back as is and we're going to gather uh, the back into the waistline of the skirt and we're going to do exactly the same here. So let's just add that gather line. But actually what we're going to do is we're going to do it from this point here. Because if I was to gather this whole edge, we'd get a lot of gaping on the front. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, I'm going to gather purely from this dart leg to here. Okay, That way we know we're not going to... It's our gathering is going to be from, let's say, the dart leg or where the, let's say, the dart should be. Okay, so the majority of the gathering is going to be around this place, which is great. If we were to put it in the front here, then we would just get a lot of gaping on the front. Just trust me on that one. So we're going to go from this point to the side seam. Let's go effect and then stylize. Where is it? Sort transform zigzag. Preview. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Let's give it loads more of those. Let's make it similar to the other one, make it slightly higher. Click OK, and then let's add some arrowheads. Great. OK, so that is essentially our front bodice block. Let's group that, and then this is our facing panel. And we'll come and decorate those a little bit later and clean them up. OK, so next we want to create this skirt block. Uh, let me just make these. Oh, hang on. Let's join all this up. So we're being consistent. There we go, perfect. Okay, so now we want to play with the skirt. At the moment, it's a very, very long, um, let's say, almost like a pencil skirt, which is restricting Francesca. So from the fitting, we wanted to add loads more volume to this skirt to make it a little bit a bit more decadent, a little bit more statement, so she can, like, you know, swoop and twirl around in it and it'll kind of like flourish around her which would be lovely. So we're going to completely get rid of this. I'm going to use the same concept in terms of this wrap but I'm going to get rid of this um, this skirt bottom completely. So it's going to chuck this over to the side. And I'm going to go back into Pattern Lab and I'm going to draft um, a new skirt block. So let's go to Pattern Lab which is here which is great. Let's go to the lab. Zoom out a little bit. There we go. I'm going to go to Francesca's profile. Francesca UK 10, and I'm going to go to the skirt. I'm going to go for the basic skirt. I'm going to go for fit. I'm going to go to custom. And this time, before I had about three centimeters ease on the skirt block, which made it a little bit too large for her, made it a little bit frumpy. I want to, let's say, nip her waist a little bit or to make it a little bit fitted. So I'm going to go this time for zero centimeter ease on the waist. And for the hip, let's just also go for about one. Nothing crazy. Keep it quite. Um, quite close fitting. Click next, although it's not really going to matter because my skirt's going to blossom and, sorry, not blossom, but like bloom out around her. Uh, I'm not using the right words today. Anyway, um, next we're going to go floor. We still want this to be floor length. Let's go to front. I'm going to go for no seam on the front. And for the front, we're going to go for the single dart, which is exactly the same as we had before. Well, actually, no, we had the V-yoke, but this time we're going to go for the single dart pencil. I'm going to click next, and I'm going to go for the back block. 
click no seam and here I'm going to use something slightly different I'm going to use the reverse darts now if we have a look at the preview you can see that essentially when we close when we reverse the darts when we close these ones and open up at the bottom we get this big um, we get a lot of volume down the bottom which is lovely so I'm going to use these in combination to create that very flat front but that really dramatic back okay so I'm going to use these ones and I'm going to click next I'm not going to have a waistband because we're attaching this to our bodice so no waistband I'm going to click purchase once again um, obviously I'm an admin so I'm going to click the sorry I'm going to click the E pattern because this is the one that is editable in Adobe Illustrator. PDF is not editable, it is purely a paper pattern you can print out and do manual cutting with or on paper. I'm going to use the E pattern though, so I'm going to click Add to Cart. And obviously I'm an admin, so lucky for me I don't actually have to pay for this pattern. I'm going to click Confirm. And I'm just going to edit and preview and download it. This is my block, looking fab. Let's just download. Let's save it on my desktop as, let's call it... Um, Okay, big back skirt. Um, you can pretty much call it anything. Save my desktop, click save. So I'm just going to open up the big back skirt block. Um, and we have them here, which is looking fantastic. I'm just going to copy them. I'm going to paste them into my indigo robe adjustments. Okay, and so we're basically, get rid of, we're basically getting rid of this. And we're going to start drafting this new skirt using this new set of blocks. Let's just move these apart a little bit. First of all, I'm going to work on the front. Uh, so let's just get rid of some of this content because we don't actually need this right now. It's a bit. It's going to get in our way when it comes to pattern cutting. Okay, so first what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a really lovely chevron um, detail on the front, which is obviously smaller than our existing sample. And I'm going to go. I've measured this out, and it's going to be four centimeters. Four centimeters on the side seam. Copy. Let's just rotate that to the side seam, and then on the front it's going to be. 12 centimeters. Hit copy. So something that's a little bit more dramatic, something that's a little bit more interesting. In fact, you know what? No, 12 is a little bit too much. We're going to go 10. So I'm going to go minus 2 up. There we go. A little, something a little bit more subtle or subtler. Uh, we can just get rid of these. <coughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend this past those points. I'm just going to go object. I'm going to expand that line. Click OK. Oh, actually, no. Before I do that, uh, what I want to do is I want to essentially even these up so when I close this these lines are going to be the same length and I'll show you that. I'm going to draw a line through the center of this dart I'm then going to get a right angle triangle or right angle <laughs> a rectangle sorry uh, just to create a 90 degree angle okay so obviously rotating that to that point will give us a 90 degree angle here and let's just snip and snip get rid of that this is our guideline I'm going to place it in the middle where those two meet and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a point here and a point here. And I'm just going to shift that one up. And I'm going to shift this one down. So now these are now aligned equally on that dart. So when we actually come to separate this top from the bottom to create the chevron, uh, this will close comfortably. I'll show you. Object, expand. I think it's already been done, but let's do it anyway. Let's select both of those blocks. Let's then remove front. And as you can see, these two blocks have been removed from the bottom, which is great. And then... If I want to swing this one shut, like so, using that rotation point, you see how they both match up, and that's because we basically evened the points. Let's just close or unite these blocks. There we go. Great stuff. So this is now my upper chevron panel, which is looking fab, lovely. Uh, and I now need to, obviously, we don't want this tiny little dart here, it's going to look a bit unsightly, so I need to essentially remove this from our side seam. So let's just do that now. So let's just measure the distance from here to here, which is 0.78 centimeters. And we're gonna go 0.78 centimeters. Let's rotate that down. There we go. Then let's just cut that little section, remove the 0.78, and then let's just zoom out. Just gonna simply click and drag that across. And there we're just simply removing uh, that 0.78 okay so now essentially we can get rid of this dart before we do that I'm just going to get a guideline down because that the bottom of that dart essentially marks where our thigh split is going to be okay so let's just mark that because it's important let's create a dash line so 10.5 I think um, okay so next I'm going to get rid of this because obviously I've taken it from this edge here so let's just remove that completely there we go fantastic so at the moment let's just mark this guide all the way up through the top here just snip snip 
Okay, so it's looking good, but we've got this really harsh little lump here, which isn't particularly good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to smooth that line out. I'm just going to snip and snip. Let's just turn that into a guideline, lock it down. Let's then join these two points together and then use my Bezier tool. <coughs> Actually, let's cut that so we don't interact that line. Let's then just go, my Bezier I'm going to take to that point for guideline and I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to take that point to the guideline and that will give us a nice smooth curve that pretty much fits that line well. And now we can remove that existing guideline. So we've now got a beautiful curve. Let's just average these and let's join them. And then let's just unite that block to make sure it's completely enclosed. Move that up slightly. Fab. Let's group that and move it away. Okay, so that's now our skirt block with the lovely chevron detail, which we love. It's looking fab. Next, we need to basically find our thigh split. And what I'm going to do is, I know that Francesca's um, waist to hip measurement is actually 24 centimeters. So I'm going to, um, I want the thigh split to come slightly higher than the largest part of the body of the hips. So I'm going to go zero, I'm going to go 20 centimeters down. So we're forming that split four centimeters higher than the actual hips, which is here. So that is now essentially our split point and we can make that a thicker circle so we can see that. Okay, so we found the center of the thigh for the split and we've also found the depth of the split as well. Let's just group these. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so now we have this information. We've pretty much sorted that block out. I'm then going to basically transform and reflect it. Copy. Let's move that across. Let's join these two blocks, unite them. Let's unite these two blocks and let's just draw a nice guideline there we go. Um, great, that's a nice guideline. Let's just split it there. Okay, that's great. So I'm going to leave that. Let's just group them. Now let's go on to the back of our skirt. We'll come back to this one later. Okay, alright. So first of all, we're going to create our chevron on the back as well. So I know that once again on the side seam it is four centimeters, you see. So let's just go four seam down. Let's rotate that to the side seam. And on the back I want something a little bit more dramatic, so I'm gonna go oh let's say twelve. No, let's go fifteen actually. Oops. Move that point fifteen centimeters down. We're then going to draw a guideline between these two points or a line. And let's just expand that further. We can get rid of these points now, don't need them. Let's then object and expand this. And we're just going to basically slash this top bit from the bottom bit using this object. Let's slash them. Let's ungroup. And then, you know what, that's far too an aggressive... Um, you know what, I'm wrong. That is far too an aggressive chevron at the back. Let's change that to be 12 copy. There we go, that's a bit more like it. I think that's a little bit better. Right, okay, um, let's just move that to the center there. Make sure it's 4cm. Center, center. Object, expand. Okay. Oops, what happened there? Okay, that's already expanded. And let's just remove, which we have done. Great, let's get rid of those points. We don't need them anymore. Okay, so that's now our back block. Okay, so there is one, a few more things I want to do to this back block. So as I said, at the moment this is floor length, <coughs> but I actually want to expand um, the length of that so it trails on the ground by about 30 centimeters. So I'm going to go down, but first of all, at the moment most of our flare is in the side seam and also sort of the, the side back, but not much in the back here. It's going to be flat. So I essentially want to bring this out a little bit just to add a bit more flare so we have that train that kind of falls behind the dress. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this point here. Let's just make these blocks a little bit darker so we can see them. Okay, so I'm going to get the very bottom of my dress block. Let's do that one as well. We'll move that one up. Oops. Separate them so you can see. Okay, consistency. Right, um, so next what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this point here. I'm going to go out by 15 centimeters. Okay. I'm just going to hit copy. Oh, not copy, sorry. We want to go OK. So let's go minus 15 and hit OK. Fantastic. So that's now going to be <coughs> the center back of my block.
Now, I haven't done it to this panel here. I haven't taken it from this point because I want this to be fitted to Francesca's body. And I then want it to, let's say, splay out or... Uh, what's a good word? To Yeah, to just sort of like exaggerate out from this point at the back. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat that as my new center back seam. So I'm just going to rotate here and I'm going to go like that until that is essentially on the vertical, which should be there. We can check that. Yeah, it's not too bad. Let's just get it perfect though. There we go. That's our so that's our new skirt panel. And also what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend this. As I said, I want to extend it out by, let's say, 30 centimeters, so it kind of drags along the ground at the bottom. So I'm going to take this point. Let's just grab a point or create one. And I'm going to go 30 centimeters down, hit copy, and that will be the new dress length. Okay, I'm just going to leave that as it is right now. I'm not going to draw it in. Let's just group these, and let's take both of these blocks. I'm going to go, oops, transform, reflect, and then copy. And I'm just going to move that across and then join those blocks together. Let's just join. Let's join. That hasn't worked, but that's fine. We can just move that over. Join. Just want to make sure they overlap and then join. Okay, we get rid of these. We can also get rid of those little points too. Okay, fab. I'm getting there. So let's just move this uh, over. Okay, so now we pretty much have the front and the back of our skirt block, and we have our chevrons. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this block here, and I'm just going to move it to the base, and then rotate it, and join those two side seams together, as if you're actually joining this dress together. I'm then going to transform and reflect it to the opposite side. Copy. Let's move that across. Um, join those at the side seam. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And what we'll do is let's just unite those as well. <coughs> Has that worked? No, not yet. Unite. Same with this one. Move it over. Unite. <coughs> okay, fantastic. So what we'll do now is um, <coughs> we're going to draw in this concept. So let's zoom in. We're going to draw in this concept of the overlap on the side seam, okay? The split and overlap. So it's exactly the same kind of shape. So I'm going to, you can see my split points here, here and also here. We can actually get rid of this one. We don't need this one and we don't need this one. I'm going to then draw a line from this point down to the very base of our dress. So the new one that's 30 centimeters away and I'm going to join it up to the other split point. Make sure you get it in the center. Like that. Great. <coughs> Let's get the outline. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start creating some curves. So I'm going to get this point. Is that in the center? No, probably not. Let's move it to the center. There we go. So I'm going to get a bezier here. I'm just going to drag. <coughs> drag it all the way down to the bottom. I'm going to do the same with the opposite side as well. Drag it all the way down to the bottom. Like that. And then we can also drag this one out. And it all depends where I want my, um, let's say, the curve of my dress to hit the floor. So at the moment, if you think about it, oops, cancel, uh, this is essentially our side seam. Where is it? There it is. So this is our side seam. So at the moment, it actually, it, it's, it's higher up. So if I were to make it slightly more obtuse or more exaggerated, it would essentially hit the ground at floor level on the side seam. So I can obviously play with these bezels to get a different let's say, location where it hits the ground. So I'm going to say I want it to be slightly higher on the side seam here, or maybe slightly lower. I just don't want her to trip over, essentially. You know, what I could do is also say, well, maybe this is a little bit too obtuse. Maybe I want it to be more of a straight line from that block. So let's just do a smaller one. Let's move it further down, and let's, there we go, and control it this way. So we get more of a, you know, so that the curve doesn't come from the top. It comes from the bottom. And I'm going to say, right, well, I want it to cross. I want it to hit the ground pretty much just at the side seam there. So that's looking good. Great. So let's just, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to snip that here, get rid of this one. I'm then going to reflect this, transform, reflect, and then copy. Move that to this point. And actually, no, you know what? We're going to have to measure the distance. I'm going to measure the distance from this point to the hem, which is 40.35. Because I want it to fall pretty much the exactly the same location, but on this side of my dress. 
So let's just take this point, or let's just draw a point here. And it's actually up by 40.35. Minus 40.35. Copy. Let's rotate that round <coughs> until it hits that line. There we go. We can get rid of that point now. And so essentially that needs to join here. So they kind of like separate at the same place. Okay. Uh, that bet is great. Now this one, let's have a look. So essentially this is my side seam here. So where is this going to cross? At the moment, it's hitting the ground pretty much just as your foot would be stepping on it. So maybe that's a little bit too much. Maybe we want it to kind of come to about there. Might be a better solution. Or possibly we can move these up ever so slightly. Anyway, I'm just messing around at the moment, but you could essentially change the... You could adjust this slightly here. I'm going to go there. That's going to be fine, I think. Okay, so now we've created um, our, let's say, our curve. <coughs> it's now time to create our crossover. Don't forget this is the split point, and we're going to use the same concept here. So when this is folded in, uh, this point and this is folded in, these two points meet. Okay, this point and this point. Do the same on this side. So I get my pen tool. I'm just going to join this. <coughs> Hang on, we've got a few things going on. Pen tool, pen tool. Let's take it all the way up to the top here. Okay, that's being a pain. <coughs> there we go. Great, what I'm going to do is I'm now going to cut this block. I'm going to cut it at this point and also at uh, this point. And let's just make that invisible. We, know actually, we no longer actually need that. We can actually get rid of this line here, that guideline. We want to join these two. Join. Fantastic, and let's join these two points as well. Join, and join. <coughs> okay, and also here, what we're going to do is we're going to take this point, we're going to go up to our split, and we're going to go across, and let's just create those curves. Perfect. And then let's just cut our block here, and also here, and let's make that invisible, or at least like marked out. Great, let's join these two points. Join. Okay, so now you can see we have our new pattern block, which is essentially the same as this, it's just we have that big flare in the back. Let's then remove this, just make that a little bit faded out so we can see what's going on here. <coughs> there we go. Okay, so now let's adjust the top panels here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut here and here. Let's just then remove that block. Let's join that one. Let's do the same here. Remove, remove. Let's join this one. <coughs> and that is essentially our skirt pattern, which is pretty much finished. Okay, so we have the chevron on the front. Hang on, we've got a few more bits to cut here, have we? No, that's it. Great. Let's just group these. Okay, so this is our front. Um, <coughs> let's have a look. How does it fold over? So it's on my right, then it'll be on the left-hand side of the dress. So this is our front left, and this is our front right panel. Okay, group. And then this is our back panel. Mm. Yeah, this is our... So this is our... Um, <coughs> front, right, upper yoke panel, front, left, upper yoke panel, back, upper yoke panel, and then this is the actual skirt that will join to it. Okay, looking great. Um, okay, so that is pretty much it when it comes to the adjustments um, for this next step in our twirling process. Hopefully the skirt will create a really beautiful, um, you know, flowing, dramatic effect when Francesca is wearing it. So once again, just to reiterate, we've shortened the sleeve, we've increased the cuff width, we've uh, increased the overlap on the front bodice block by 4 centimeters, which should bring the neckline further up. Um, we haven't done anything to the back uh, at this point, because we quite like the back. Join. Um, and we've also created a brand new skirt, but using the existing technique, <coughs> which is this overlap. So essentially, uh, let's just get rid of these. 
Yeah, that's our side seam, which is important. That can go, this can be brought out. So essentially when this panel is folded over into the uh, center here, and this panel is folded over, they will overlap at this point, or sorry, they will overlap at this section, but these two points will join, giving us that, uh, let's say, thigh split. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to now tidy up this pattern. Um, so it's actually printable, um, obviously it has all the relevant information on it that I need to actually print, for example, you know, cut one pair or the name of the block, etc. Okay, shouldn't take too long. Okay, so this is pretty much our finished pattern. <coughs> and as you can see, I've obviously added in all the labels, I've cleaned it up, made it a little bit neater, obviously added in the cut times one on fold, then we have the fold line, um, slightly thicker line for the outside, slightly thinner line for the inside, we have our nice new uh, grain lines, and we also have our darts, uh, not darts, sorry, our notches, which allow these blocks to match up. And to add these in, it's really simple. Essentially all you do is you match the blocks up, and then you just draw a little line between the two, which is, let's say, 90 degree angle, to the line, just snip, and then you can pull this block away like that, and then you can just simply group all these together. Okay, so really simple to add notches. <coughs> Let's just remove these, we don't need two there, that's fine. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. We've got all our information here when it comes to what well, we can type here as well. Oops. <coughs> Gather into waistline. If you really want to add these, you can. Obviously, I know uh, what this means, but if you're basically giving this pattern to somebody else, obviously you want to have a little bit more information to give them a clue what's going on. Okay, yeah, so that's pretty much it. As I said, we've added all the logos and the labels and bits and pieces, so we're pretty much ready to print this out now. It's exciting, and obviously start constructing it, and then have a look at the fitting. Um, yeah, as I said, this is more of an overview of, a detailed overview of how we actually create this pattern in Adobe Illustrator, but uh, once we actually have this block polished and finished off, um, I'm going to do a very in-depth tutorial when it comes to point-to-point, -point, all the different tools that I've been using, especially when it comes to like moving, etc. More of a um, <coughs> an explanation in Adobe Illustrator. Uh, and you can then obviously create your own basic blocks using Pattern Lab to your unique specific measurements for this tutorial and you'll be able to have a robe that fits you uh, pretty much in the same way. So really exciting stuff. And there's one more thing just before I forget. Um, we're not quite finished just yet. So what I've done is basically added it to the pattern pieces, all of them, to one of our um, A4 PDF print template. This allows you to save the document as a multi-page PDF document which you can then print out in full scale on lots of different pages and then piece it together much in the same way with most independent sewing pattern companies nowadays. Um, yeah, I mean we have tutorials that show you how to actually, A, where to find these PDFs, uh, the templates and also how to add them and then obviously how to print them off. That's why I'm not going to cover it in this tutorial just now. But um, yeah, we uh, provide them in A4, A3, A2, A1 and also A0 and also US letter size. So um, yeah, take a look at our digital pattern cutting in Adobe Illustrator courses to learn how to do that and get the relevant files. Okay, that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial and uh, if you want to see how the robe actually fitted then check out Season 1, Episode 8 on the video blog uh, on the actual website. Otherwise, if you're on YouTube then take a look at the Season 1 playlist and you should find it in there. Season 1, Episode 7. Uh, sorry, 8. Okay, thanks a lot. Take care.